to your scale modelers. I'm Leon from Air and Ground in Scale and I welcome you to the hobby. We're in the weathering stage of the BF109 from Edward in 1 to 48 scale and the topics in this video are continuing with the panel line wash and then transfer into accentuating the surface of the aircraft with oil colors. This won't be adding dirt and grime, I'll focus more on altering the black basing color foundation which got a little bit lost by the black color scheme of this specific BF109. I'll try to create more contrast with the oil colors or the result of the model will be just a piece of boring dark plastic. As I was pretty busy outside scale modeling, this episode is long overdue and I'm sorry for the delay. So don't forget to hit this notification bell to see when I post any update. If you want to, check out the last episode to get up to speed where we are now with this model. So let's dive into it. As a panel line wash, I use AK Interactive's Stone Grey dedicated for accentuating panel lines on dark aircrafts. Don't forget to shake the bottle once in a while, because in my bottle the pigments settled really fast and then there was only thinner I applied. The product is really easy to apply, just brush it on the panel lines, sometimes the capillary action does all the work. Then let it dry for some time. I wasn't sure which color I should use as a panel line wash. Here I tried a white color which would pop out the details but it would be too much. So I used a grey color but perhaps later on I'll add a second custom panel line wash made from oils to lighten some specific parts, we'll see. While letting the panel line wash dry I took the opportunity to correct some seam lines which some nice modelers brought my attention to it. To fill it I took the Vallejo acrylic potty which has a perfect applicator. So let's fill those lines and gaps and let them dry. As I try to get the other small parts at the same weathering stage as the main part of the aircraft, I added the panel line wash to the wheel bay covers and the spinner tip. This one will need some more correction with a white color, but I'll do that later on. For the wheel rims I used Amomix Dark Wash. Just look how these details pop over the nice red color. This is going to be a very nice detail on this all black aircraft once it's finished. The same wash was used on the other small parts and gears. To complete the painting of the gears I used the Molotov chrome pencil. Easy and fast to apply, but this time I struggled with a smooth application. But they're getting anyway some greasy stains, so it won't be very visible. Now to my favorite part, working on the panel lines, which is wiping off the dried excess with a cotton bud. At some parts I leave some of the excess as weathering.
Okay, the panel line wash created a little bit of contrast. The aircraft isn't just a piece of black plastic anymore. Before we continue, let's take care of the filled seams, which were filled with Vallejo acrylic putty. First, I cut away some of the excess with a hobby knife. Then I use some sanding sponges in different grids until the seam is flush. Sure, it is more of a challenge and much more annoying to handle such things at this stage of modeling the aircraft. But after several minutes of work, you can spray over the corrected work and you can continue. The line is still faintly visible, but what I learned for my next build that there is no panel line of the BF109s at this spot. Now before continuing with oil colors, I like to add a varnish coat, so that the paint won't leave stains or I can easily remove them without harming the underlying layers of paint. And this will be the last varnish I'll add as a paint layer. Every other weathering layer will come on top and won't be protected by anything. First I used a semi-gloss clear coat from Mission Models, with some of its thinner. And I sprayed a wet coat over the model as they instruct in their instructional videos. The result was absolutely ok, but for my taste it was still too shiny and to work with the oil paints I like a surface with a little bit more grip. So I changed to the flat clear coat from Mission Models, which I misted onto the model. But now the result was too flat and had a chalky surface, so I switched again to the good old Tamiya semi-gloss varnish which I sprayed diluted with some Mr. Paint Leveling Thinner. And now I'm okay with the result. I only use two oil colors to work on the aircraft surface, a grey one and a black one. And I love to work with the Windsor and Newton Odorless Thinner because it has never left some stains or oily residue, like other thinners did. And of course, I need some brushes. The first step is to moisten the surface. Don't flood it with thinner, just moisten it. Then I added little dots of the darker oil color in corners or over rivets, which I continued directly to blur these dots with a soft dry brush. Now the grey comes into play, which I concentrate more in the middle of the panels. These I wanted to lighten up a bit. Continued with blurring them with the same brush as before, creating some sort of grading between the grey and black color. Then I leave it to dry and continue with the next section. I work in sections, it is easier for me to adjust the amount of oil color needed and how much I have to blur it. But there are always the same steps. If the oil color is only very thin, it creates a filter, you can play with that too. And when the oil colors are really almost dry, I wipe over the whole surface with a big soft brush to take off the edge. I don't know if this does something, but I like to do it anyway. The oil colors leave a very nice finish once they're dry. The right side has already oil treatment, the left side is just painted. The difference is subtle, but it creates more contrast which is needed on this black aircraft. Now, if there are some prominent parts which stand out of a surface, like flaps or something, I like to accentuate them and creating some lights and shadows, with the same oil colors used on the surface itself, with the same technique as before. I add more dark oil color in the corners and bends and the lighter ones on the leading edges. To create these shadows and lights, I add more color material, this means I have to blur it even more but the result shapes the black color of the aircraft and makes it easier to look at, 
it's more interesting to the viewer's eye. What are you doing while working on your models? Do you use it as a concentrating zen experience? Do you listen to music or do you watch the latest episode of your favorite series on the side? If you like podcasts, check out the series from Plastic Posse. Link is in the description. They have really interesting guests and topics which add even more entertainment to your workbench while doing your favorite hobby. Again, they are on every social platform and the link is in the description. Check them out. After this stage we can remove the masking of the wheel wells. It's a little bit fiddly to get the magic putty out, but if you take a second piece of it, it'll stick together and you can tear it out. Also if there's some residue left inside the gear base, you can tear it out like this. I really like how the underside already looks and it's a little bit more interesting with the oil treatment. What do you think? Now let's continue on the top of this black crow with the same procedure with oils. As you can see, I accentuate the leading edges again with the lighter oil color. But let's finish this stage in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in, because there will be again something special if the channel reaches 2000 subscribers. So enjoy your time at the workbench.